Bibles, River Faith Church. This is your Bibles. We are continuing our series called Christ the King. And let's turn our Bibles in the book of John. The book of John is in the New Testament. Let's turn our Bible in the book of John, chapter 13. Book of John, chapter 13. And we are continuing our series called Christ the King. Let's pray together. Father God, Lord, thank you, Lord, for an amazing week, amazing time. Lord, just an amazing life that you've given us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you open our hearts, Lord, this morning. That we may truly understand, Lord, who Jesus is. Why is he the king? Why is he a different king? Why is he the king that was born in the manger? Why is the king that that lives such a humble life? Why is he our savior? Father may be with us. Teach us your word. As we lift up everything to you, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Last week we talked about the story of David. And we kind of mentioned the story of David. When David was running away from Saul. And he was hiding in the caves. Because Saul wanted to kill him. And he meditated. And he, he just kind of think out loud and says, Oh, how I wish I could have this fresh water from Bethlehem. Unfortunately, his men heard him. And the Bible says that they even broke enemy lines just to give him a glass of water. Can you imagine the kind of admiration they have for their king? He was just thinking out loud. He wasn't really commanding them that, hey, you should risk your lives and get me a glass of water. He was just thinking to himself, man, how I wish I could have this fresh water. And his men, knowing that his word means so much, they risked their lives, they broke enemy lives and get this water. And when they give it to David, David says, no, man, I cannot, I cannot drink this. I have to honor you or I have to bless the Lord for you guys. You risked your life just to give me this drink. Imagine a king supposed to be like that. Can I hear you that? A king, when a king says something, it is, you know, you can take it to the bank. If it's all authoritative, if it's something that you can say, oh man, if, if the king says it, then I have to follow because the king said it. That is our idea of what a king is. It's royalty. King is the greatest person, you know, in the kingdom. Whatever the king says, of course, everybody's going to follow. You know, it's the same thing with King Nebuchadnezzar. When he says, I'm going to put up an idol, and when I, you know, play Michael Jackson, <laughs> and you hear that, oh, then everybody's going to bow down and worship this, this idol. And only three people stood up to him. and said, oh, no, we're not. You don't like Michael Jackson. Like 50 Cent. But King says, you know, whoever dis disobey me, this is what's going to happen. That's what the king is. But the story that we're going to talk about today, we're going to continue with this series called Christ the King. Say, Christ the King. Christ the King. Say, Christ the King. Christ the, king. the Bible says, when the wise men were looking for Jesus, they asked King Herod, where is the newborn king? Say, King. King. Where is, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We are here to come and find him and worship him. And King Herod got so insecure and says, you know, what, what king are you talking about? I am the king. And so, you know, he tried to kill him, tried to, you know, look after him. The Bible says that Jesus is king. But last week we talked about what is a king doing in a manger? How come, how come a king is born in a manger where there's no even room in the inn? And today we're going to talk about the king washing feet. How many people spa? How many of you love that, right? You know, I never thought, you know, your, your feet can lose weight. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But after you go to the spa and they do that little scrub, oh man, your feet feels a lot lighter. Can you hear that? Yeah. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Because you know you got a lot of things there in your foot that shouldn't be there. And then, you know, there's people like... So you better tip them good. You better tip them good because, you know, they, they make your feet lose weight. If you've been to the spa, you know, there's one, you know, just pampering things that you could ever do now. You go to the spa, you do a little massage, and they have also do your feet. I mean, ladies love this. 
you know, ladies out there, you just go there and they put your feet in this, you know, uh, water and they boil it. I don't know why they boil it. Is it boiling? It's just warm, right? It's just something there. Just the salt and takes up. And, you know, and they scrub it, they clean it for you and all this. You know, during that time, the biblical times, it is customary for a home or a house to have the water ready for their guests when they come in. Because in biblical times, people are just walking and they're just wearing sandals. They don't have BMWs, they don't have Honda Civics, they don't have none, none of that. So they're traveling, their, their feet are all dirty. And so when you are hosting a person and they come to your house, it is customary. It is their show of their hospitality to make sure they're very rich. They have actually slaves that they can wash their feet for you. But if there's regular home, there's some water there, and make sure that they, they wash your feet. And that is just a custom during that time. And usually the people that wash your feet are people that are really just the slaves. The lowest in the household. That's your job. You wash your feet. Now, man, you get a lot of tips for washing feet. You know, I don't know if some of you work in the spa. But during that time, this man, if, if you're the one that's washing feet, man, it's, it's not like a good place to be in. Can I hear that, man? So the question is now, what? What in the world is a king doing washing people's feet? Why would a king wash someone else's feet? I thought I couldn't even imagine doing that right now. How many of you would actually wash someone else's feet? You don't know what, what's in there. Can you hear me, man? You know, feet is sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just strange. You know, because you don't see it much. It's always covered. You know, but you know, if somebody tells you, you know, you go to your work and all of a sudden your boss tells you, are oh, you washing feet today? What are you going to say? I don't know about that, boss. I think I'm going to lose my job today because I don't want to be washing feet. But you know what Jesus says? I have a lesson that I need to teach. And today, nowadays, talk is cheap. Can I hear that, man? Nowadays, talk is cheap. I can preach to you. You know, I can tell you all these things. I can tell you all these lessons. But I think action would speak louder than words. Can I hear that, man? You know, even our generation today, I believe that people would rather see a sermon than hear one. Can I hear amen? What do we mean by that? They don't really would know how much you care unless you show that you really care. They wouldn't know that you care unless you show it. They wouldn't know that, they wouldn't just simply say, oh wait, that's, that's true, you know what you're preaching is good. Unless you actually show it. And live it and show them that you know what these words are true. That's why I believe Jesus says, wait, wait, wait. You know what? This is I'm about to die. You know, one of you gonna betray me, and you already know who it was. And so he says, Man, I gotta leave you a very important lesson that's gonna stick with you, and that's gonna be the foundation of your worship, and that's gonna be the foundation of your discipleship, and that's gonna be your foundation. Of how you're going to live your life in the kingdom of God. And I'm not just going to teach this to you. I'm not just going to give you a Bible verse. I'm going to show it to you. And you're going to feel it. And you're going to ask why you're doing this. You're not supposed to be doing this. And Jesus is going to say no because I want you to learn something. The story of Bible is John 13. Chapter, uh, chapter 13 verse 1. To 17, that's what we're going to read today. John 13, verse 1 to 17. Let's start reading from verse 1 to 11. It says here, I'm reading from New Living Translation. It says, Before the Passover celebration, and that is where they have last supper, Jesus knew, say knew, that his hour had come to leave this world and return to who? The Bible says in John, in John chapter 1, verse 1. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He came from the Father. He took the human form. He took the human flesh. So He can die for our sins. So here the Bible says that Jesus knew. Say knew. That means He understands already. 
He knew already that his time had come to leave this world, which means he's going to be turned to the, 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 he's going to turn to the Roman soldiers. He's going to, you know, these people are going to mock him, pull his beard, punch him. He already knew what was going to happen. He understood that, you know, I was born to carry the burden of the sins of the world. And this time has finally come that one of my disciples will betray me. And this is where it's going to start. That I'm going to carry the sins of the world. Jesus knew that already. And look what it says. He had what? Say love. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth. And now he loved them to the what? To the very end. How many of you, you want someone to love you just in the beginning? How many of you, you want someone to love you for just five years? And then you have to renew that again. And it's up for negotiations. How many of you want to do that? Okay, you know, we're going to get married and we're going to love each other. But every five years, we have to negotiate it. Okay, so we have to make a new deal. How many of you would like that kind of love? No. How many of you, you would want someone to love you until the end? Do or die. Stick with you forever. Can you hear that, man? That's the kind of love we're looking for. Can you hear that, man? The Bible says that Jesus loved his disciples and he did not just love them when he had a use for them. He didn't just love them because, you know, he wants, to, he wants them to do what he wants them to do. He loved them from the beginning. And here it says, he loved them to where? To the very end. And you know what? That's the kind of love that Jesus has for us. Can I hear that, man? Can we give a hand to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? If you've never felt someone's love so much, some of you probably fell in love, you know, with your spouse, and you're like, man, I can't imagine to have a kind of love like this. Try the love of Christ. Then that's how you really understand what love is. Can I hear that, man? Now, I'm not saying your love you know, that romantic love is not true. I'm not saying that. But there's a different kind of level of love. The Bible says it's agape. Say agape. agape. Unconditional. When Jesus loves you, Jesus doesn't love you just today. He loves you until the end. When you smell good, or we don't smell good. When you're successful and you have all these things going on, Jesus loves you. And when you're on the rock bar, he still loves you. The Bible says he had loved his disciples during his ministry, and now he loved at the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil, the devil, yeah. had already prompted Judas, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father, take note of this, verse 3, Jesus knew that the Father had given, say given, yeah. him authority over everything. Say everything. Let's do this, okay? We're going to do a little wave. When we say everything, we're going to start here. We're say everything. No, you guys are going to do it too. It's a wave. You guys know what a wave is? Okay, let's try it. One, two, three. Everything. Here's a little leg. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Everything. Okay, let's do it this way. It's fun. Let's do it. Everything. No, let's do this. This is Moses departing the sea, okay? So some of you are going to go here, some of you are going to go here. So it's like Moses departing the sea. Let's do it. Everything. You guys got confused. Let's do it again. <laughs> it's like Moses is going to depart, okay? So you guys are going to go this way, you guys are going to go this way. One, two, three. Everything. There you go. <laughs> the Bible says that. He knew already that the Father has given him everything. Authority over what? Everything. When you say everything, you don't exclude anything. The Bible literally means everything. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and he would return to who? This is God. Come from God and would return to who? Yeah. To God. So he got up the table, and this is what impresses me about Christ. The Bible says that he knew that all authority 
for everything had already given to him. That means he had authority over everything. That means you are now the man. You're the king and savior of the Lord. You are the man. You knew already that the authority the Father has already given it to you. But still look what Jesus did. Look what it says here. Verse 4. So he got up from the table. He took off his robe. Wrap a towel around his waist and poured water into basin. Then he began to what? Wait, 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 Jesus. I don't, I don't think you understand. All authority has been given to you. You are the man now. All, everything, say everything. everything. You are the man. All authority is given to you. Why are you doing washing people's feet? Why are you still going to go ahead and still wash your disciples' feet? Those people, give that to, give that to, to the workers, to the servants. Give, give it to somebody else. Man, you, you hold a very high position now. Can I hear an amen? You hold a very high position now. It's not fitting for you to be washing people's feet. But the Bible says, after he knew that all authority was given to him, Jesus got up, poured water, and then began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them, not only washing it, he does wash and dry by hand. You know, it's kind of like, you know, car wash today. You know, they, they emphasize that, you know, dry by hand. You know, so you can pay more. It's not like, oh, you know, automated car wash. You wash the feet of his disciples, dry them with the towel he had poured around him. Number one, I noticed this morning. Jesus was given all authority, yet he showed the full extent of his love. Jesus was given the full authority, yet he still showed the full extent of his love. We have to be very careful with promotions and authority given to us. Because sometimes it gets into our head instead of our hearts. Can I hear an amen? Sometimes when we are put in the place of authority, or sometimes when we start in that ladder, we start from the bottom, now we're on top. Sounds like a rap song. We started from the bottom, now we're on top, now we got promoted. All of a sudden our feet is not on the ground anymore. When authority is given to us, sometimes it tends to come inside our head and we say to ourselves, oh man, I, I work hard for this. I earned my degrees, I earned this. So you have to better treat me with this respect and all that. That is true. You probably have earned it. You probably, you know, you are put there in the position because you are more qualified for it. But the question is, are you still humble enough to understand that whatever promotion that you have been given in your life is not just because of your own strength, but because there is a God that blesses you beyond measure and the God that wants to love you beyond measure. Can I hear an amen this morning? Let us not be too conceited because we have been promoted and we have been put in that pedestal. In today's world, that is the problem because we, we love to put people in that pedestal and we put the requirements and the, and, and, you know, the anticipation. It's so high. That's why when people fail, we ask ourselves, oh man, he's not supposed to be doing that in all this. Because we put in that pressure when someone's giving authority or saying, you know, it's supposed to be like this. Jesus says, wait, 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 wait a minute. I've been giving authority, but here's how I'm going to show you how my kingdom works. In my kingdom, the greatest has to be the least. And sometimes we complain about that. Can I hear an amen? I can't let get raised. I didn't get a raise this year. Why are you always late? <laughs> well, I can't be God promoted. Well, you always call in. 
Oh, how come we didn't get this? How oh, come I didn't get that? Should I ask yourself, man, did I do, did I do my job? Was I the least? The, the Bible of Jesus says, if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom, this is what you need to do. This is the lesson that he wants to teach his disciples. And not just teach them, he wants to show them. I am the man in this room, but look what I'm doing. I'm washing your feet. And let's turn here. Let's continue reading. Look what Peter says. I love Peter. Peter always, you know, just reacts without thinking. You know, a lot like us sometimes. You know what Look what Peter says. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus said, duh. Water. Yeah. You don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. And look at what Peter says. Just like when, Peter, when Jesus told him, you know, I'm going to die. And, Jesus, and Peter said, over my dead body, Lord. I'm not going to let that happen. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. I don't like what I'm seeing from you right now. Look what, what, what Peter says here. Jesus replied, don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. And Peter says, no. He protested, you will never ever wash my feet. Because my feet stinks. I have athlete's foot, Lord. You don't want to touch this. And Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. And then look what Peter said. Peter said, then wash my hands. And my head as well, Lord. Not just my feet. And Jesus replied, heck no. <laughs> I'm not washing your hand and your head too. I'm just washing your feet. Look what Jesus says here. Jesus replied, the person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. Unless Jesus washed your sins away, you can never really have a relationship with Him. Can I hear that? Because you will keep doing it with your own works. You will keep trying to impress Him with the things that you think, oh man, I'm doing this, Lord, I'm feeding the hungry, I'm doing all these things. Those are good. There's nothing wrong with them. Actually, that's what we do after we get saved. We want to serve Him now. But the Bible says it's not the other way around. You don't do things so you can impress Jesus. You can never impress Jesus. Jesus is washing the feet of his disciples. That's humility. That's the humble thing that he could ever do in telling his disciples, I'm setting an example for you to follow. This is not just me blowing smokes and showing you that I'm humble. I'm showing you this because I want you to understand that when you start following me, that when I actually die on the cross and when my father resurrected me, and then when I leave, this is exactly what you're going to be doing. You're going to be serving. And sometimes it's going to, it's going to feel unfair. Can I hear you, man? Sometimes it's going to, you're going to have the hardest time. Sometimes you're going to ask yourself, well, why am I still doing this? You know, these people are not responding. All of that is going to be part of your ministry. But the foundation of it, you have to understand, is if I wash your feet, then you're going to wash the feet of each other. Love as I have loved you. This is the greatest example that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ not only taught us, but showed us that even though He is Christ the King, He says, I'm not too good to wash someone else's feet. I will wash the feet of my disciples. Not because I just want to blow smokes, but because I love them. You know, when you love someone, you hold nothing back. Can I hear that? Parents, when you first saw your children, they do nothing to you. <laughs> Literally nothing. Except cry, go to the bathroom. Actually, not go to the bathroom. They just go there. Eat. They do nothing. But there's one thing that you just tell yourself, man, I will give everything for this little burrito. <laughs> they look like a little burrito when they come out. And that is love. Can I hear that? Jesus says, I'm not holding anything back. If I'm washing your feet, 
And you're telling me now, Lord, you shouldn't be doing this. Guess what I'm going to do later? I'm going to die for you. I'm going to die for you. That is the king that we serve. Can we hear an amen? Can we give an amen to our king? Sometimes when we think that we are high and we, we achieve things, let us be reminded that whatever success that we have in our life right now, it's a blessing. Yes, we earned it. Yes, we work hard for it. But ultimately, it was God that gave us that promotion. And let us never be conceited. It never says, I'm too good to do this now because I'm here. No. In the kingdom of God, everyone serves. Can I hear that? In the kingdom of God, everyone serves. And the Bible even says that when you serve God, make sure nobody sees it but only your Father. So that your Father can reward you for the pureness of your heart. Amen. Not just you want to show up that this is what I'm doing. Jesus says to his disciples, this is the life that you are going to live. For all of us in the ministry, sometimes it gets pretty tired. Can I hear you? Sometimes we feel like burnout. Sometimes we feel like it's unfair. Sometimes we feel like, oh, Lord, I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this. But the next day again, Jesus wakes you up and says, hey, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You got to serve. Because there's so much joy knowing that you are not alone in what you're doing. Can I hear that? Amen. For all of us pastors, our ministers, whatever you're doing for the Lord, be reminded that we're not doing it. We're not doing it for an audience. We're doing it for our King. And that is the greatest joy that we can ever do in our life. Can I hear that? I don't, I don't think I was going to be in the ministry. Be reminded that the Lord Jesus says, that's, that's going to be it. That's the juice of the ministry. you got to love those times when you feel like, oh God, these people. <laughs> and you're one of them. Jesus is going to run you one of them. <laughs> Keep washing your feet. Keep washing them. Because if I wash them, you got to wash them too. Let's continue reading. Look what it says here. In verse, um, where did we stop? Verse 12. Verse 12 says, After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, Do you understand? Say, Do you understand? Do you understand? He asked his disciples, Do you understand what I was doing? Probably his disciples are looking at each other. They're like, I don't know about this, Lord. I don't know if you're trying to impress us. Or you just smelling something that nice and you decided to just wash our feet. I don't know, Lord, why, why are you doing this? Look what it says. Do you understand what I was doing? Verse 13 says, You call me teacher and Lord. Diakonos and Kurios in Greek. A teacher and Lord. And you are right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord, Kurios, and teacher have washed your feet. Guess what? You ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example. Say example. example. Turn the person they say, say next thing say example. example. I have given you an example to say follow. follow. Remind the person next to you, follow the example. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Its slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for hearing them. Is that what it says? God will bless you for paying attention to them. Is that what it says? God will bless you for making time at church and listening to them. Is that what it says? No. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for what? Doing. For what? Doing. For doing them. The book of James says, don't be such just listeners, but doers of the word. This is where rubber meets the road. And for us ministers, that is the challenge, the big challenge in our life. Can I hear it? Because the real power of your preaching and your teaching is your doing. 
Now hear that Parents, when you tell your children don't do this, and they see you doing it, guess what? What monkey sees, monkey eats. <laughs> our action will speak louder than our words. Jesus says, I didn't do this, so you can just listen to it. I didn't say, God will bless you just for paying attention to it. God will bless you when you do it. When you live what you preach. When you live, when you set the example, when you follow the example. And you do it, and you live it in your life. Number two in our notes. Oh, before that, the Colossians 1, 15. Verse 17, the quarter says here, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created. And is supreme. Say supreme. supreme. How many of you love that word, supreme? supreme. Does it just remind you of pizza? Yes. You talk about supreme? Supreme over what? Creation. What does the Bible says? The story that we're, we're talking about now? Jesus knew that everything, the authority over everything that's given to him. The Bible says that he is supreme over what? All creation. For through him, God created what? And in heavenly realms and on earth, he made the things we can't see and the things we can't see such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and Sounds like Jesus is a pretty important person to me. Can you hear that, man? Everything was created through him and for him. And yet, he washed the feet of his disciples. Look what it says there. Let's continue reading. Oh, look what it says in second in our in our point number two. In Jesus' kingdom, humility is foundational. Can we serve God truly if we have pride in our hearts? It's hard. Can I hear that, man? Because the pride is going to battle. The Bible says that Jesus has to be sitting in the throne of our hearts. Our pride says, no, you're supposed to be sitting there. Because you earned it. You work hard for it. You deserve it. Those are the words. You know, We love to feed ourselves with those words. Oh, you earned it. You deserve it. Oh, you work hard for it. It's you supposed to be the one. It's you, you supposed to be, you know, calling the shots. The Bible says Jesus, when he taught this to his disciples, here is a very important lesson in ministry. Humility is foundation. It's hard to serve God when you are fighting whether it's going to be you or God. It's hard to serve God when, when, you, when you can, you, you're going to keep fighting with Him and telling Him, God, well, I don't like that idea. Jesus says, if I do it, you're going to do it too. Well, Lord, I'm not good at washing people's feet, but I did it. That's the kind of humility that Jesus is looking for. Did Jesus have to do what He did? Does He have to do it? No. No one can, he doesn't owe them a foot wash. He doesn't owe them anything. But to show the extent of his love, he understands that his action will speak louder than his words to his disciples. So he wanted to, them to understand a very important lesson. Something that they can take in their lives. Jesus established a very important principle in the life of his disciples. I am the greatest, so if I did it, you have to do it too. If Jesus is really our Lord, and He's the one that we follow, follow our example, sometimes we just gotta say, God, okay, I'm doing this for you. And swallow up my pride, God, it's for you. This is for you. If you did it, I'm gonna follow it. You know, the problem sometimes, many leaders today, they lead by words and not by example. Can I hear them? Right? Sometimes that's where we fail, even as Christians. That's how we fail. We are good in teaching, we are good in preaching, but sometimes our action doesn't match it. 
Let us be challenged today that Jesus himself set an example and says, you know what? I'm not just I'm just I'm not just gonna preach it to you. I'm gonna show it to you. I'm not just gonna tell you obey, I'm gonna show you what obedience is. Can I hear the amen? You know, sometimes I talk to couples and you know we all you always go by Ephesians six or five, right? You know, wives submit to your husbands. Husband loves your wife. And you know, sometimes I talk to men and they're like, man, pastor, they have to submit. You know, the Bible says they have to submit. How do I do that if they don't listen? Simple. Wash their feet. <laughs> they can say, yeah. Right? Simple. How can I get my wife to listen to me, pastor? We always argue about Sally. <laughs> Sally, stay up. Okay, it's all big lives. Uh, slow. <laughs> we always argue about Sally and all this, and we don't agree. And you know, every time I tell my wife to follow me because that's what the Bible says, you know, we always go back and forth, back and forth. You know, the problem is you're preaching to her. Show her what the preaching is. Do you hear I see a lot of women like, <laughs> keep it, keep it, that's it. Keep going. Sometimes we fail on our preaching because it's not shown to us. <clears throat> and all of us fail to that. Can I hear anything? Parents, husbands, wives, pastor, teacher, leaders. We are very good in teaching and preaching. But sometimes it's not in our actions. It always stuck with me. That's why I love the servant evangelism because I've heard this quote. It says, don't just tell them about heaven. Give them a taste of it. Sometimes we are very good at telling people, hey, you're not going to heaven. You're going to hell. You know, you see you later. <laughs> you know, your, your life is messed up, man. Hey, this is Jesus. You know, sometimes people get turned off because, you know, we, we always just teach. But I always believe that if you give them a taste of it, I think they will understand it more. Can I hear that? When I came to know the Lord, it wasn't just a teaching. It was His love that I felt in my life for the very first time. I felt so loved. Can you hear me? It was His amazing grace. It was His grace that allowed me to understand that even though in my sinfulness, He loves me. He does not condone or support my sinfulness, but He loves me so much that he wants me to be away from it anymore. Mm -hmm. And he says, no more. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that when Jesus healed someone, he says, sin, no more. Mm -hmm. Christ says, I love you so much, don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. It was his love that captivated my life. That allowed me to fall in love with Christ. Can I hear name? Am I the only one in this room this morning? Am I the only one in love with Jesus? All of us have experienced this. It was his love. It wasn't just the preaching. It wasn't just that, that pastor that night that just preached the word. No, it was real. I felt it. I lived it. I received it. The forgiveness and the love of God. And that is the love of Christ. It's not just merely words. It's true in our hearts. Can I hear that? Let's give a hand to our God. Verse 16 to 7, it says, I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Lastly, close with this. No one is greater than the king. Therefore, what the king does, the people must follow. The hardest struggle in our Christian life is our obedience to God. Can I hear anything? I've been told before, Pastor, if you want to be, really want to be a pastor, you've got to have full submission to Christ. you got to have full submission. And I was thinking, aren't we all supposed to be doing that? Is it just a pastor supposed to have a full submission? Jesus says, if you want to be my disciples, and this is a parable, a hyperbole, he says, you got to hate your father, your mother, your brother, your sister. Now, he's not suggesting you hate them. 
Because some of you already do. <laughs> but he's saying, you cannot love more than anyone or anything else more than you love me. If you're going to love me, love me with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Because the love that I give you is the same thing. I don't love you just on Sundays. Imagine if God just loves us on Sundays. Man, this church will be packed all the time. Right? Because <laughs> God's just going to love me Sunday, man. Tomorrow I'm not going to be loved anymore. <laughs> God loves us every single day. And that is something that we should be thankful for. Can I hear that, man? Let's give that to our God. God loves you every single day. Actually, turn to the person next to you and say, God loves you every single day. Telling that to your husband or your wife, then add the things that you know. God loves you ever seen that even though you nag me every day, you know. <laughs> even though you don't cook me breakfast, God loves you. So stop cooking me breakfast. <laughs> Jesus did not have to convince anyone that he is king. He knows exactly who he is, that is why. It was easy for him to wash the feet of his disciples. The verse that we talked about last week stand, it says, do not try to impress others. If you know who you are in Christ, you don't have to say a thing. Because you know who you are in Christ. You don't have to work so hard to be accepted. You don't have to impress someone. You don't have to, to gain the audience of someone, the sympathy of someone, or the admiration of someone, or the recognition of anyone. Yes. Amen. If you know exactly who you are in Christ, that is enough. Yes. And that is speaks for itself. The Bible says that we are forgiven. I know that for a fact. Yes. And even if the, the, the devil, you know, giving you all these guilty feelings and all this that's telling you, man, you're not good enough, you're this, see what you did again, all of this. Just tell him, I know who I am in Christ. Jesus knew who he was. He knew he was king. He knew when he come back, the second time, the second coming, he's going to be king riding in clouds with the heavenly host. Jesus knows. He says, I, I, I don't have a problem. I don't have, I don't have you know, identity crisis. It's not going to hurt my feeling if I wash the feet of my disciples because I know who I am. I am King. I am God. I am Lord. I am their teacher. It's not going to be, it's not going to make me less of a man if I humble myself and wash the feet of my disciples. Jesus knew exactly who was, who was King. But it says, I can wash the feet of my disciples because I know who I am. And I know who my father is and what he sent me to do. Genuine authority does not have to be forced. If God is giving you a genuine authority, God is giving you a genuine position, you don't have to force it. You don't have to impress it. You don't have to do it eh? because God is the one given to you. When Pontius Pilate was was interrog interrogating Christ and he asked Christ, did you say you were a king? Yes, but my kingdom is not in this world. And Pontius Pilate says, well, I have authority as well. And Jesus says, yeah, you do. But only the one that's been given to you. Jesus says, I know exactly who I am. Genuine authority does not have to be forced to simply practice by leading, by example. The best sermons that we can ever preach, including myself, is the sermon that we can live our lives. The greatest challenge for pastors, for preachers, even for us as Christians, is to practice the message that we preach. That is the hardest thing. Can I hear that? Amen? Because sometimes that's when we fail. It's not an excuse, but it's true. Jesus says, I'm going to show you, not just teach you. 
And I'm sure the eyes of his disciples were open to the reality of God's kingdom after their feet were washed. And I'm sure their lives were never the same after Jesus washed their feet. And later that night, they saw him took a beating. They saw him carried the cross. They saw him crucified on it. They saw him die on the cross. But after three days, he rose again. Just like what he said he would do. We love Jesus because he doesn't just preach. He showed it by his actions. He showed it by his love. Can I hear that? Let's give a hand to our God this morning. So I ask the ushers, uh, I mean the worship team to come forward. Let's pray, Father. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you. That you never fail us. You're always true to us. That you don't just preach it, Lord. That you bring it. That you show it to us. That you And we understand, Lord, that these are just merely words. That your actions speak louder in our lives. Lord, we want to ask you to forgive us if there are a lot of times that we fail to lead and live by your example. Remind us again this morning, God, that serving you is the greatest privilege, and the greatest calling in our life to serve you. the best privilege, Lord, in our life. It's our greatest pleasure in life to know that the God that we serve is the God who also serves us. The God who came down and took the human flesh. Show us humility, kindness, love, and compassion. Maybe some of us here today, you see, that's the kind of Lord and, and Savior that I want in my life. You know what the Bible says? In Romans 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart, the Bible says that you will be saved. And it's not just your mere words, it's the sincerity of your heart. If your eyes are open and your, your heart is open this morning, you say, I want Jesus to come in my, my life and my heart. Pray this prayer in the privacy of your heart. Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. I know that I offended you in many ways, God. Please forgive me of all my sins. I thank you for your love and your compassion. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. You were buried after three days, but they rose again. So you can give me eternal life. Lord Jesus, today I surrender you my life. I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. The Bible says that it is not just the words that we speak, it is the sincerity of our heart. Let's put our faith in Christ because He's truly He's truly our Lord and Savior, the only begotten Son of God. Lord Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for reminding us that we are not serving men, but we are serving you. What you decide for us, Lord, is your obedience and our submission to you. Father, we thank you.
We love you as you first love us. As we pray, we ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Amen